Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial brought to you by Jade Raider 2020. And in this tutorial, this is going to be very special. Now, you're probably wondering why my scene is dark right now. Well, for one, in this particular tutorial, I want to, I want to prove to you that the method we're going to be using for baking out light maps will work. And also, too, we're noticing as well that my B settings here, a lot of the options that I use, have been disabled. And that's because I created a B settings file, which 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 allow me to give more control over my scenes and beast for light mapping the scene. Now if you wonder how you're wondering how to create the um the beast file, you go here to this little checkbox and hit generate B settings file. And you notice how nothing happened because I have one already there. But when you create a B settings file you create a folder under your scene name, under your scene, as well as the name of the scene and the B settings for. Now, the cool thing about this is that the B settings file name we exactly the same every time, but it is it is it is going to be scene specific. And no, you cannot overwrite, you cannot rename the B settings file because Beast is looking for this file name. It always will look for it no matter what you do to it. So if you want to find, if you want to keep, you want to keep your B settings as they are. You have to go. You have to go into the XML file itself, copy the values into a text editor. So let's go ahead and edit this setting. You know, I like, I like, I love the idea of editing my uh, B settings. So I'm gonna go in here, and I'm gonna tell you what each one does. And we, we and we open your XML file. You're gonna get this wall of text. It isn't a big wall, so don't be too scared. But basically, these all these settings here. Will allow you to change your um, your environment lighting to any way you want. So let's look at the anti let's look at the anti-aliasing settings, which by the way is in its open and closed in its open and open and closed tag. If you use Dreamweaver or do web development, you'll notice these a lot. If, this, if you use a lot of if you use Dreamweaver or web development, this will be very familiar to you. Um, the sampling mode is is for basically Beast sampling mode for sampling the pixels in the light map. And the options are adaptive and super sampling. Now, when I bake my light maps, I will usually keep this at its default because when you move it through your scene, it will not matter much because it will look beautiful. And this right here is the contrast, contrast, which is actually the contrast threshold in any of these B settings. And what this will do is it will force Beast to render more samples into the light map, but the cost of your time. And basically, the lower the and it's basically the, low, the lower the value, the more the more um, samples are forced to render. But I recommend leaving this at 0.1 when you're testing your scene. The, min the minimum and maximum sample rate tells Beast how tells Beast when you're anti-aliasing the light map. How many set, how, how how much the anti aliasing? When you do this, I think very carefully about this. Basically, the, min, the defaults are zero and two. The default is zero, and the max rate I would put it between two and three, no higher than that. The higher you go, the longer you have to wait for the light map to render. The filter is what beast we use to filter out the um, filter out. The um, the light map. If you, if you use Numtool Ray or any kind of renderer, this Gaussian is a default, which creates a very soft feel to, to your to your image, to the light map image. Then there's box, and then there's triangle. Those are op those are options that I normally do not use, but you can experiment, experiment with them. To use other filters, type in the name of the filter here, whether it's Gauss, box, or triangle between the tag between the filter tag. And yes, it is case sensitive, so I recommend using it as it's written. Capital B O X. It's case sensitive. The next section is filter size, which I will, I will leave these alone. The, 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 these are the size of the filters in the X and Y direction of the light map. Having changed having all these at all when I use the B settings, but you can if you want to, but I recommend leaving it at 2.2. The next settings are render settings. Now these settings here control the shadows in your scene. 
The bias, if you're familiar with mental ray shadow mapping, controls where the shadow, how far the shadow will be rendered from the object. So at zero, it's default. The shadow will be rendered directly by the object. It will not be, it will not be rendered far away if you raise the bias. I recommend leaving this alone when you're rendering your scene because it may lead to undesirable results. The maximum shadow raise is, the, is how many samples beast will bake into the light map of the shadows. The higher, this, the, higher, the higher the number, the more rays we calculated to create a smooth shadow, but as a result of more render time. The maximum ray depth is set to 6 by default. I recommend leaving this alone because any bit higher then you're asking for trouble with long render times. So leave these alone. The next set of settings within the tags is a very important one, and it's for your environment. Now, if you're doing a lot of outdoor lighting, this is extremely useful. Now, I'm going to go ahead in depth with this part for a moment and explain to you what each part does. In the GI environment tag, between it is Skylight, which is the default when you create your Beast XML file. What Skylight does, it tells Beast to use the Skylight color to bake your light map. So right now, if I go ahead and change the color here, let's say to 0 0.76, 0 0.130, 0. and yes, you have to put numbers between the RGB to N alpha tags. These must have a number between them. If left blank, Beast will throw an error. And you hit save, Usually an error will pop up saying that do you want to keep the set keep the settings? You use keep settings. The um, endings rather. I'm gonna to return to Unity. I'm gonna hit render. We'll bake the scene. And you notice how to now that nothing will happen. Why is that? Well, there's a small option that you may miss when you bake your um, your light mapping. And this is another tag called GI environment settings. Or intensity rather. And what this does this essentially enables the global illumination. You can set it to one, hit save. You will actually bake the skylight into the scene. And when you bake it, you now get this beautiful red lighting. And you notice too, I have light probes that popped into the scene. And basically the light probes are on the character. Now keep in mind now that on the character model, the character does have normal mapping and details on him, but because this is a diffuse operation, you're not going to notice it too much. If I turn this off now, you'll just see the red bleed onto the character ball, which is great for this guy. For now, keep the light off and keep this going. And now, and also too, if we change the setting, the higher you go, the more intense the skylight will be. I recommend leaving this at 1 for, real for realistic results unless you're on some nuclear planet or something. Okay. The next setting I'm going to change is the GI settings. This section is very important. In fact, some of the options here are also very important. The, F, the FG rays stands for final gather rays. Now, at default, a thousand rays is the default value in the XML file when you first create it. And this here controls how many rays are fired at this, into the scene when it's rendered for the light mapping. And remember, it is the same thing as it would be in the regular beast interface. The higher the value, the more rays will be cast for the longer the render time. And the same thing here for FG cartridge threshold is basically the same thing as I mentioned up here in anti-aliasing. The lower the value, the crisper the light map will be, but for longer render time. Usually, I leave these at the default, so I don't change them or anything. Um, FG interpolation, I leave, I leave that alone as well, because when you uh, bake your light map, these settings will be the thing, unless you change it, unless you change it yourself. And basically, what this does, it basically tells Beast to re either render it linear, or in or more deep or more or less detail. It'll blend the it will blend the it will blend the details together, but you may smooth out the you may smooth out the me smooth out the detail a little too much. Now the primary integrator is the final gather, which is a default for the beast XML file. The other option is none, and I, re and I recommend leaving this on. 
The next section is primary intensity and saturation, which both control how much intensity there will be in the scene when you fire your um, initial lighting. If I set the two and hit, and hit the big tab, you'll notice how the scene will get brighter. And, and this may be, and this may be the effect you want, but I recommend leaving it at one for testing purposes. And saturation, what this will do is it will set, it will lower the saturation of the skylight color, what's happening to the scene. Now this is, this is useful if you're doing like um, a sunset scene and you want to like have a bit more orange in the scene. What that will do is it will basically take it, it'll take the, it'll take the color value and let you either drive it up or lower it. I recommend leaving this at one for now when you're doing your testing. The secondary integrator allows you to um, allows you to render the initial bounces of indirect light. The default is none. The second option is um, path, path tracer. So to choose path tracer, type in the word as you, as you see in front of you. And this is case sensitive. Path tracer with a capital P and uppercase T. You hit save, return to Unity, hit bake scene, watch the progress bar. You'll see the word path tracer in there. It'll be in there fast, but it is there. And what that and what that does, it bakes more of the um it'll bake more of the bounce lighting from the, from, the, from the bounces of the indirect light. This is optional. You don't have to use this. But I do you I, I turned it on for um for purposes of illustration. Oops. If I go ahead and save my scene and bake the scene again, you notice now too that the light will get a little bit dimmer in the sampling. And they, if you notice that it, it just happened. Now the next settings here, there are secondary intensity and secondary saturation, which is the same thing as the primary saturation and intensity for the primary integrator. So that's pretty much it for the, um, the custom B settings in part one of this tutorial. Basically, I wanted to go over with you how to use these XML settings. As a matter of fact, just for fun, I'm gonna change the color of the world to the green. I, th I think um, I, th I think a green world is pretty cool. It's something you normally see. If I hit big right now, you're gonna see the world turn green. Which is good because um, this allows you to sample the scene, and there you have it. This is the um, the sampling of the scene now with the green light. And also keep in mind too that when you bake your scene, all this is diffuse. So if you have normal mapping in your models, and also to the light, also the lights are off. So basically, I've I've essentially turned off the pixel lighting just just to get the just to get the the look of the diffuse. So visual interest, I'm gonna turn on the light again, the lights again. Just just to um just to show you what it would look like with the lights on. And as a matter of fact, I'm also gonna go ahead and bake the lighting one more time. Just so you can see what's going on. Let's give it a second to bake. And you know and you notice how and you're probably noticing that the lights did not render. Let's, let me take one second to see what happened to the lighting. If I go ahead and clear my light map. Yes, in fact, I, I, do, I do recall that I turned the shadows off in the, pre, in the earlier scene, so I'm going to turn the shadows back on. The soft, I'm going to turn the main light on for soft shadowing. So I'm going to go ahead now and bake again. And also, too, the reason I turned the lights off is because I wanted, I wanted to show you that the um, the bakes do work when you use your custom settings. And you notice now too that how all the shadows in the scene are now tinted with the color of green. You have to admit though, it's a pretty nice color running on your scene. And I'm going to end the video here because when I get back, I'm going to show you how to bake this scene again using another option for light mapping and beast. And that's called image based lighting. So I want to thank you for watching part one of this tutorial, and I will see you in part two.